Hey, good evening. Welcome to Overflow Night. Hey, would you do me a favor? Would you stand to your feet real quick in honor of, of God and, and being in his house tonight? Hey, we're with a, uh, a moment of expectation. And uh, I want to start every Overflow Night the same way. Uh, there's a lot of places you could have been on a Friday night. We know these nights are sacred in our culture. Uh, but tonight you showed up to church because I believe that you need something from God tonight. And um, so I just wanted to speak something that's been on my heart all week. I don't know if it's for one person. I don't know if it's for the room. Um, but I just felt like there was a, a spirit of anxiety that would be in the room tonight. And I, I don't even know how to define that um, exactly. I just know that all week, and I didn't know who would show up, and I don't have a face to it. But I just felt like tonight, God wants to tear anxiety out of some people. Yeah. And, um, and so that could be stress, that could be worrying, um, that could be just not having answers to things and you're freaked out and, and you don't know how you're going to do it, you don't know how you're going to make it, and so it creates this anxiousness in you. Here's what the Bible says in Philippians chapter 4 verses 6 through 9, it says, do not be anxious about anything. Okay, now th this is an easy verse to just kind of say, but not live out, right? Yeah. Do not be anxious about anything, but in all things, with thanksgiving, present your request to God, and the peace that passes all understanding will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. Let me just say that again. And someone, you need to hear this before we even start tonight, because you don't know if you can worship God because you're so worried about something. You, you don't know if you can trust God. You, you don't know if you can trust yourself. And so I think there's multiple people in this room tonight that you came into this place with an anxious and worrying heart. And tonight God wants to give you perfect peace that passes all understanding. But there is a part that we play in this. The Bible says, do not be anxious about anything, but in all things with Thanksgiving. Can I tell you something tonight? One of the hardest things we do in our life is we thank God for something that isn't going well. So tonight that we would actually stand here and say, God, I thank you that I don't know how I'm going to pay that bill. God, I thank you that I don't know how that relationship is ever going to be restored. God, I thank you that I don't have all the answers. God tells us to come with thanksgiving with our anxiousness. This is a paradox that doesn't make sense in human terms. So if someone in this room tonight, you have anxiety, you're conflicted, God is inviting you with thanksgiving to make your request known tonight, to hand it over to him, to trade your anxiety for perfect peace. I believe that tonight. I believe that God brought you here tonight to release the anxiety that you've been dealing with. God's going to do other things for other people. We're going to have a time of worship where you can freely worship our King. We're going to have a time of receiving God's Word, and I'm so excited what God would speak over our church tonight. And then at the end, we're going to have an opportunity to respond to what God spoke to us and what God is leading us in. But for the person that came here anxious tonight, worship with thanksgiving as if God's already done it. And I believe God's going to break something in your heart. God is going to tear something away from you that you've been trying to deal with on your own. You've been medicating it. You've been reading books about it. You've been talking to your friends. And it seems to never go away. And in a moment, I believe tonight, God is going to trade anxiety for perfect peace. Yeah. If you believe that, would you just join me in prayer tonight, Father? We just commit our full attention to you. God, we don't come in here having every answer. God, I pray that any agenda that we had tonight, God, we would just lay that at your feet. God, this is your time. We have nothing that we hold sacred to right now. We want to give you audacious, ridiculous, extravagant praise. Not because we feel like it, but because you're worthy. And God, we want to set a platform for you to speak tonight. God, we want to set a platform, God, for us to receive. God, would you open our ears would you open our eyes, God? Would you open our spirit to all that you have for us? God, right now, would we just empty our hands to the things, God, that we've been holding on tight to, the things we've been trying to fix, the things we've been trying to correct? God, would you take those from us right now? And God, as we worship through pain, as we worship through 
fear, as we worship through gratefulness, as we worship because you've done great things and we're going to praise you for it, as we worship through all of the different circumstances in this room. God, would you hear our praise? God, would you open our heart? God, we want all you have for us tonight. We don't want to miss a thing. We commit this time to you in Jesus' name. Amen. If you're ready to worship God, would you clap? Would you scream? Would you dance? We're ready. Let's go. Come on, somebody. Put your hands together like this. Come on. I was buried beneath my shame. Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my tomb till I met you. Come on. I was breathing but not alive. All my failures I tried to hide. It was my suit till I met you. You called my name and I ran out of that grave. Out of the darkness into your glorious day. You called my name.
overflowing from within me and it won't run dry there's no limit to your promise jesus you have done it all for me jesus you have done it all for me Wash over me, wash over me. Come on, sing it, salvation. Salvation in the water, with a love that flows so deep. Wash over me, wash over me. Thank you for your love and your grace and your mercy that's new each day, Father. Come on, somebody, can you thank him for his grace and his love and his mercy that's new each day? Hallelujah. We love you, Lord. Standing here in your presence, in a grace so relentless, I am by perfect love, wrapped within the arms of heaven in a peace that lasts forever sinking deep in mercy see I'm wide awake drawing closer by grace and all my heart is yours all fear removed I breathe you in and lean into your love. Oh, 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 your love. When I'm lost, you pursue me. Lift my head to see your glory, Lord of all, so beautiful. Here in you I find shelter, captivated by the splendor of your face. My secret place, I'm wide awake, drawing close. Stirred by grace, and all my heart is yours. All fear removed, I breathe you in and lean into your love. Oh. Washing over me, your 
and sing that out tonight. Come on. Spirit, break out. Sing it like you mean it. Yeah. Break out. Oh, Spirit, break out. Spirit, break out. Heaven, come down. Sing King Jesus. King Jesus. You're the name we're lifting high, your glory. Come on. Shaking up the earth and sky, revival. Oh, come on, somebody. Come on. Do you know what you're singing tonight? Come on. We want to see your kingdom. We want to see you. Sing it again. King Jesus. King Jesus. You're the name. You're the name we lift in high, your glory, shaking up the earth and sky, revival, we want to see your kingdom here, yes we do, yes we do, we want to see, come on, sing it again, King Jesus, you're the name Yeah. 
So this song, it, it talks about revival, right? And I'm always that guy that says the best is yet to come, but what if we're right in the middle of God's best and we're always looking to the next thing that we don't enjoy the place that God has us and the thing that he's doing right now? What if you're in the middle of revival in your life right now? I, I just I just believe that there's someone here tonight that you're right in the midst of where God has you. So don't look past your moment. Don't look past where God has you. Don't look past what he's doing right now. Because he's moving. Because he's doing something. And I was also thinking, like, what would that mean for you for the spirit of God to break out in your life? Like, what would that mean? What would what would happen? relationally what would change in our finances what would change in our workplace what would change if the spirit of god truly broke out in your life i don't want to cliche our way through worship every time and sing about the spirit breaking out but not making it personal for a moment so why don't you just sit there for a moment still you can close your eyes and God, if we really want your spirit to break out in us, God, would you do it individually so that it could happen corporately as a church? But God, we need it as an individual. God, I need it as a husband. I need it as a father. I need it as a son. I need it as a minister. God, I need your spirit to break out in my heart. God, would you change the way I think about people? God, would you change the way that I trust you? God, would you allow me to see you for who you are, not who I've created you to be? Not this projected image of who I want God to be. God, would I see you as a perfect, loving God, but also a just God, also a holy God. God, I pray tonight that your spirit would break out, not so that we could feel emotionally full, but God, that we could leave here feeling like a son and a daughter of the Most High King, that there is nothing in the world that could stop you. God, you're undefeated. And so tonight, we want that. God, as we move and transition into a time of hearing your word, God, I pray that you would pierce the hearts of those that came here tonight. God, I pray that you would sift and move your way throughout our being God that you would speak as if we were the only one in the room tonight God I pray that you would use Kristen to bring a word that I know she's been praying about and hearing from you for a month about so God tonight would you use her words to speak over our church and God at the end of this when we go to respond God let us not have to get motivated to get up and respond to your your word tonight, respond to worshiping you as we close. God, let there be a contagious atmosphere of worship as we close our evening tonight. So God, stir is open and available before you tonight. God, speak, we need you. If you believe it, would you say amen? amen. Say amen. Hey, greet as many people as you can in 25 seconds. Do it real quick and then we're going to hear God's word.
overflowing right now. I love it. <laughs> hey, hi. God is so good. We're about to overflow even some more. Amen. Oh, you can sense the atmosphere is hungry. <clears throat> you guys came here tonight hungry. Amen. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Pardon me. God is good. Hey, sis. Glad you guys are here. All right. Well, let's buckle up. You guys ready to, to hit it? Get some more? <clears throat> These overflow nights are awesome. I love that we, we serve a pastor, serve in the kingdom with a pastor who values such an important time where we can come together as family and we can just, we want more. We want more. Amen. I can just feel that in your attitude. You guys are leaning into God. And you know what happens then when you're leaning into God, right? You guys, are y'all you, are you out there? Hey, sis, glad you're here, preacher. Um, we lean, when we lean into God, we get more, right? When you lean over, it's like when you lean over the table at Thanksgiving, you're getting serious about that meal, aren't you? You're like, all right, something's about to go down now. I got on my sweatpants and I'm going to fill it up, right? That's who we are tonight. We're ready to fill it up, all right? So buckle up. We're going to receive good stuff from God. So Pastor Eric has created this opportunity for us. He's posted on Facebook to get refreshed spiritually. You could go home right now and say you've been blessed with that. Amen. To worship boldly and to pray for miracles. What are we going to see here tonight? I believe we're going to see miracles here tonight because that's just who God is. Amen. We serve a miracle worker. So here we are. We're going to talk tonight about how to live in the overflow. It's great to come and hang out in a place where we can tap into the overflow. But when we walk out that door, pastor's got something up. up. Can you all look at that? It says, go and do what you've heard today. I love that. So that's what we're going to do. When we walk out that door, we're going to take this atmosphere with us into our lives so that we can overflow that. You know, like when babies have eaten too much. <laughs> I won't say anything, but my... Uh, my son, <clears throat> whose first name starts with R and ends with Ian, is sitting like right in the middle over there. And when he was a baby, we were running through the airport. I had him over my shoulder, down my back, <laughs> came his overflow, <laughs> running through the airport. But tonight, you guys are going to overflow. He's overflowing with some great things other than that. Amen. And we all are. But who here? thinks more is better than less. Who, some of you think more is better than less. Well, I've got a video. I want to share one gal's opinion with you. Who thinks more is better than less? Turn it up. Okay, why? More is better than less because if stuff is not less, if there's more less stuff, then you might, you might want to have some more and your parents just don't let you because there's only a little bit. Right. We want more. We want more. Like, you really like it. You right. want more. I follow you. It's not complicated. More is better. And AT&T yeah. right? has the right? largest... I love that. It's not complicated. Because if there's more, less stuff, you might want to have some more. <laughs> more is better. We want more. Everybody say, we want more. <laughs> we want more. Amen. So let's pray and we're going to get some of that more. All right. Well, Father, we've come to you today to get more because we know that's who you are. You're not the God of just enough. You're not the God who dishes out one little piece of pie. You've got pies left over. Thanksgiving's uh, full of leftovers. And that's what you have put inside us. You've commanded us to walk in that overflow. So, Father, I thank you that the eyes of our understanding are open here tonight. Our ears are ready to receive. Our hearts are open, ready to receive. And our hands or feet are ready to go out there and do what you've commissioned us to do. And what we're going to hear tonight, by the Spirit of God, we're all in, God. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, we're all having a quest for overflow 
you know, it's just in our nature to want more, right? That's why the Pringles commercial is so successful. Just try to eat just one. You can't, you can't eat just one, right? But how many of you here might be a minimalist? Is anyone here living as a minimalist where you've cleared out all the clutter in your life? I see some fingers pointing here. All right. Yes, I know you have. Your house is awesome, sis. So you've cleared all the clutter out and it's just clean and pristine. Why are you doing that? So you can live with more other stuff. Like this gal, we might, we might want more other stuff. You know, you clear out the clutter so you can enjoy more family time. You're not distracted by clutter, right? You're minimalizing the distraction so you can get on about your business and enjoy what you want out of life. Amen? So even for minimalists, it's really about having more. Would you say that's fair? Yes. All right. So, what are you overflowing with? Last time I bought a new pair of pants, I was overflowing in some places I was not happy with, but we're all overflowing somewhere with our words, with our thoughts, with our, maybe our finances. What are we overflowing with? I met with somebody this week, and she had an overflow of cuss words that I had even forgotten existed today. <laughs> it was like, wow. And they just continued the whole time that we were meeting. And I'd forgotten the life that I left behind when I walked with Jesus. It was easy for me to walk away from the party life and being interested in the world. I didn't want to marry any of those type of guys. I didn't want to be like any of those types of girls. I wanted something different, but I didn't know what it was. And so that was easy, but cleaning up my mouth to change the words that spilled out of my mouth, that was a whole different deal, different ball of wax. And now I don't even think cuss words anymore because I'd taken thought of every, taken captive every thought that would try to come into my mind because you can do that, you know. That was quite a revelation for me. I can control these thoughts that I don't just have to spill out all these words that are coming out of, into my head. Some of us have more trouble with that than others. But we're all overflowing with something. But what do you want to overflow with? Come Christmas, I would love to take you, Mr. Christmas Palooza lover, to a house in Glendale. This house, it is... It is a Christmas palooza. You, walk, you drive around the corner and you, it starts at their backyard. And it continues all the way around the corner. And you're just enamored. Your eyes are so busy. You're just like, what's happening here? Christmas is everywhere. From the roof, on the walls, they let me come into their house. And everywhere you step, there was Christmas. <laughs> everywhere. Trees, toys, everywhere. Up on the ceiling, everywhere. It was a Christmas wonderland. If you love Christmas, you might have some Christmas overflow in your life. Anybody still have a Christmas tree up? So we're overflowing with something, right? All of us are, but I believe that God has called us here tonight to see if we can rein some things in and see what he wants to have us overflowing with so that we can overflow out of the abundance of our heart with the word of God being full. And then we can live a more victorious life and we don't have that clutter. We're living that minimalized life so that it's richer, it's fuller. So we're talking tonight about how to live in that overflow place, right? What does that mean to you? So I want you to really think about what, that was my question, what you had asked. That's funny, it's in my notes. What does that look like for you? What does that mean to you to have an overflow life with Christ? So um, some of us are here from Nebraska. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so a few weeks ago, uh, did you see the snow in Scottsdale and Cave Creek? Any of you experienced that snow in Arizona, Scottsdale area. Well, that same storm system, you may have seen on the news, they called it a cyclone bomb, hit Nebraska and Iowa, the Midwest. Kansas was greatly impacted. The place where we moved here from last year is severely underwater. Could you please show some of these slides? So this is Pacific Junction. Iowa, right on the border of Nebraska. The river 
if you can see, is supposed to be way up there at the horizon. The river overflowed, and 22, 26 cities in Nebraska had to be fully evacuated. The cities lost their water plants. Uh, cities in Iowa are in the same way. Show the next one. Can you imagine? And it came, it came like a, a storm. I mean, Midwest, we're, we're used to tornadoes. You just buckle down and go through it. And if you're not out there taking videos of it. But this one was an altogether different storm. Uh, have you ever even heard of a cyclone bomb? It was a cyclone from the ocean that gathered up enough water from the Pacific Ocean and dropped it in the middle of America's heartland, just like this over in Nebraska. The next slide, please. Look at this. 22 cities in Nebraska look like this. Next one. This is, uh, you, you know, Sorensen Auto Plaza. This is their house. Uh, they built it on the river. Now it's in the middle of the river. Thankfully, they weren't there. Um, I've seen recent pictures of their house. This was two weeks ago. Now they could at least get in. It's receded a little bit. But the, what happens in a flood like this is the water breaks through interstates. So Nebraska is known for having potholes, hey? If it's tax season, it's pothole season. But they open, there are road, roadways that have absolutely opened up and caved in like uh, sinkholes. But entire trucks, entire fleets of trucks. People didn't have time to respond. This came, thing came so suddenly, it just overwhelmed them like drinking worse than drinking out of a fire hose. So... Um, these, this is their house. So when, when f floodwaters come into a home, it, it tears down overpasses. The overpass from Highway 34 to get from Iowa to Nebraska is gone. Four major bridges that people use every day to, for commerce to get their grocery trucks from the Hy-Vee grocery store, hauling their groceries in, going to and from work. Four major bridges were washed away just like this, just within hours. Hard concrete interstate systems have completely collapsed. It goes through that cement water. Water is so powerful, it can break through concrete. We're talking about overflow, okay? So in my, our friend's here, house here, uh, the Sorensen's house, what happens is the water comes in and it starts to soak up the drywall. And it's completely ruined the car, all their cars and uh, soaks up the drywall. So it's not like you can just pull up the carpet. You have to completely gut the house and it gets all up into the, uh, the air conditioning, the ventilation, the, uh, uh, what do you call it? Insulation. And starts to creep up into the ceiling. It impacts the house in its entirety, complete devastation, completely overcome an, an entire state. It gets into every nook and cranny. To the saturated soft ground, it can go in and soak it up even deeper. But it's looking, when that water is flooding, it, every tiny little crack is filled to the full with water. I want to show you something. This the reason I'm showing you this is because you know what? In Genesis chapter 1, when God created the earth, the spirit of God hovered over the waters. That's how he created the earth. The earth was without form and void, but the spirit of God came in and started looking for a place to fill. And I believe that's what the Spirit of God is doing here. He's looking for hearts to fill. He's looking for those dark corners of your mind 
the secret places that you've not given him yet. You're like, no, Lord, I've got this. But you've got these compartmentalized pockets of your life that you haven't wholly yielded to him. But when he comes in like a flood, you can yield your heart or it can, it can hurt you and it can cost you. But when you yield to the Spirit of God saying, yeah, God, come on in. Oh, then it's good and it's glorious and it's healthy and it's not destructive to your life. When you're holding on to something for dear life, no, God, I'm not going to let it go. It will cost you. But when you let it go and say, yeah, I'm going to ride. I'm going to take this ride, and I'm going to ride to the surface, and we're going to go over, not under, above and not beneath, the head and not the tail, amen? So we're going to come over the top of this thing because you guys came here tonight with hearts hungry. Your hearts are open. You're saying, yeah, God, fill me up. We're, we're going to let you come into every single area of our lives, in our mouths, right? If you can't say amen, say, oh, me, right? But in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, uh, God said, let us make man in our image. And the word there actually is mankind. If you could show that slide of um, God said, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness. Let them, I find that interesting. He said, let us make man, but let them, he was speaking here of mankind and creating Adam and Eve here with a great plan in mind. Amen. Let us make man according to our image and our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea over the birds of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. He's given you control over creeps and creepiness and creepy things, right? That can be your scripture right there. You've got dominion over creepiness. Verse 27, so God created man in his own image. We're to look and to act and to behave just like him, creating, dominating the world that he's given us with great victorious uh, things happening in our lives. Amen. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him, male and female. He created them. 28, then God blessed them and he said to them, be fruitful and multiply. Now, I don't much like math. But I would think that multiplication is a good thing. You know, I don't like doing numbers and messing with them. But apparently God's got a plan to have multiplication taking place in your life. Not just stopping right here at the front door. He wants you to multiply. Amen. To multiply. Eh, where are we? Have dominion over this thing. Um, every. Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. That word in the Hebrew means control it. I think that's very interesting. Who is supposed to have control of our little world? Apparently, God wanted Adam to control his little world. This is quite a commission for God to say, I'm giving you this. You take dominion. That's a strong word. Multiply it, fill it, control it, subdue it, have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Amen? In the Amplified says, have complete authority. Amen? That's quite something if you have a two-year-old. <laughs> you learn real quick, who's going to be the boss here? All right. Well, our flesh is like a two-year-old. We're going to keep our flesh under and dominate and be ruled by the Spirit of God. Amen. So if you could show that slide of Adam being created. I think I just love this picture of, of, of God creating that uh, Adam, the touch of God. This is not an actual photo. Okay. <laughs> Michelangelo painted this. But there's, but this, look at his vulnerability. He's just all raw and open like, okay, God. What, do you, what have you got? And I, I, I think that that's how you guys are here tonight. You're just like, God, here I am. Here I am, God. We don't want to be buck naked with God. We want to just say, you know, I'll just show you a little bit here, God. But I want you to have all of me tonight. Amen. God wants you to be able to say, let's, let, let's giddy up. Let's do this thing. 
But what happened was Adam didn't take that commission very well. We all know the story. He fell, and then what happened? The next slide. Here we are. And I think this is kind of religion. We're like, but God, I'm, I'm such a worm. I'm, I'm a lowly, I'm, I'm nothing, I'm just a sinner. But God had something different in mind, for a different stance for us to take. I find it very interesting that it was only a few chapters later into Genesis chapter 9, it, God's talking again to Noah. And he says, so God blessed Noah and his sons. And he said to them, look, look at the words here. Does this look familiar to you? He tells Noah and his sons, be fruitful and multiply and the fear of you and the dread of you shall be on every beast of the earth, on every bird of the air and all that move on the earth, all the fish of the sea. They are given to your hand. Every moving thing that lives shall be food for you. In verse 7, and as for you, be fruitful and multiply. Bring forth abundantly in the earth and multiply in it. Do you recognize those words from anywhere? I find that so interesting that God first commissioned Adam, you take dominion, you're going to be the boss of this place, and you, here's what you need to do. You're going to be fruitful and multiply it. Adam messed up. God comes over here to Noah and says, Noah... Be fruitful and multiply. Take dominion. Subdue it. The fear and dread is going to be on you. In other words, he's going to be the dominator. Right? I just find that interesting. He commanded and he intended for abundance. He, com he intended for overflow with multiplication here. Proverbs 9 says, for by me your days will be multiplied. Amen? And years of life will be added to you. You know, God is in, apparently, to multiplication and addition. The devil is into division and subtraction, right? Every story in the Bible, when the people followed God, they were blessed and had overflow, right? With joy, peace, goodness, and having dominion. Amen? David saw this. I think this is interesting, too, you guys. Psalm 8, 4, David said, what is man that you are mindful of him and the son of man that you visit him? You've made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. You've put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, even the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea that pass through the paths of the seas. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. You know, Jesus came and he instituted a new commission. Amen. You know him. In John 10, 10, he said, the thief does not come except to steal, kill, and destroy. But I've come that they might have life. And he didn't, I love that he didn't leave it there. He didn't just say, I've come to save you. You're saved. I've come to give you life. He put an and in there. There's, he's talking about overflow. I've come to give you life and that they may have it more abundantly. He wants you to live in overflow, not lack and, and pain and stuff, right? Have it more abundantly. He wants you to be like a guardian of the galaxy, right? <laughs> this is how God intended Adam to be. Apparently, it's how he intended Noah to be. And it's how he's intending us to be. Look at uh, Romans chapter 5, verse 17 and 18. It says, for if by one man's offense, death reigned through the one, speaking of Adam, much more those who receive the abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. Are you reigning in your life? Are you ruling? Are you the dominator? Are you the guardian of your galaxy? <laughs> Amen. He wants you to take it on. Amen. But how do we do that? Through Christ. It's not in me. I can do all things. You know, you're not going to get a tattoo like that. Probably it's through. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Amen. Therefore, as one man's offense, judgment came to all men, resulting in condemnation. But even so, through one man's righteous act, the free gift came to all men, resulting in justification of life. 
So if you're feeling like you have totally messed up, Jesus Christ has come to justify you. Amen? God designed us to control our world. And we do that, apparently, by controlling our mouths. And he's designed us to train our brains. So 2 Corinthians 10.5, here's how to be the guardian of your galaxy, amen? Casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ, amen? Every thought, every thought. We, we get so caught up in entertaining things, amen? Uh, I was a reporter in my previous life, and I went to a school uh, where preschoolers were to be interviewed. And one little preschool boy came up to me out of the blue, and he said, I had a bad dream last night. And this other little boy standing right next to him in crisp, iron khaki pants, a button-up shirt under an argyle sweater, and he looks at this kid. He elbows him so hard, I mean with all his might, right in his ribs, and he's, oh, pause right there. To this little boy, I said, you had a bad dream? What's cool about dreams is when you wake up, you can change the ending. You can make it end up however you want it to be. And so then enter this kid comes in, boom, see, I told you it's all up in here. And that's what it is. I mean, the greatest battles we have, you know, are between our ears. But it's all up in here. What you put in here through your eyes and through your ears is what's going to come out of your mouth, right? Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks, right? So, <laughs> I like the saying that uh, you can't keep a bird from flying over your head. But you can keep it from building a nest in your hair, right? So... Not long ago, before we moved here, I was getting ready in the bathroom, and all of a sudden, I heard a whoosh. In my bathroom, I heard a whoosh, and I knew it was not the holy whoosh. There was a bat that flew through my hair, through the mirror now. <laughs> yeah. I did not feel like the dominator or the guardian of my galaxy. So I ran downstairs to my husband. And he brought out our weapon of mass destruction. So he brought this out. I slept with one of my own for several days. But God has given you tools <laughs> to conquer those thoughts. The Word of God, good things to watch on YouTube, good sermons to hang out with through God, and good friends to, to sh have you sharpen. But I, I brought this here to show you that I, this is what I clung to. <laughs> and I, I believe my husband slept with his own for a while as well. Um, but don't take these tools lightly. He wants you to use them. Use the Word of God. Spend time in it so you can take your authority and dominate every creeping thing of your life. That was what he wants us to do because they're going to come, right? Hopefully not bats in your hair. But here's, here's how you do it. Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, amen? Whatever things are noble, come on. Whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there's any virtue, if there's anything praiseworthy, Think, think, think on these things. Amen? You can control your thoughts. This, we're talking about how to live in overflow, right? You're controlling your thoughts, taking them captive, dominating them, and helping his, the word of God come out of your mouth. And you're going to rule and reign through life by the one Christ Jesus. Amen? I love that uh, Todd White said, Jesus canceled my lifetime subscription to issues. If you've got issues in your life, Proverbs 4 says, guard your heart, for out of it are all the issues of life. Right now, I want to share with you, Luke 4.18 is one of my all-time favorite scriptures because it shows me so much that Jesus knew right who he was. He knew who he was here, and he's here tonight. And I, as I share this word with you, I, I want you to imagine him standing right in front of you saying these words to you. Amen? Because he, 
I believe the Spirit of God is speaking to us here. He said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Good news is here tonight. Amen. He sent me to heal the brokenhearted tonight. Amen. If you're brokenhearted tonight, you're not going to walk out that door with a broken heart. Because the Spirit of God is here to heal your broken heart. Broken relationships. Broken body. That's what he's come for. He didn't just come to save you. He wants it to be the and more abundantly. Amen. To proclaim liberty. What is that? That word liberty means free access into his presence. Free access into his presence. We don't have to press into God. He said come boldly to the throne room of grace. To obtain grace and help in time of need. Amen. He said, I'm right here. He sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives. And recovery of sight to the blind. To set at liberty those who were oppressed. He said and amplified the spirit of the Lord. Supreme in authority is on me. Because he's anointed me to announce good news to the poor. To make whole the brokenhearted and shattered. To herald and publish liberty. It means pardon, deliverance, forgiveness to the captives, a prisoner of war. Absolute. If you've got any chains hanging on your life, tonight's the night to come lay them down at the foot of the cross. And don't be an Indian giver. Don't cast that thing out like you're fishing and keep reeling it back in. And then once you cast that thing on Jesus, he wants to just eliminate it. Amen. And he said... He's overflowing in your life. He wants grace crashing in wave after wave after wave. That, that rush of grace in his life is like the Spirit of God hovering over the, the earth now. Hovering over your heart. Hovering over you with expectation to fill you up in every area that you need. If you're hurting in any way, you can just say, yes, grace crashing over, over, over me. You know, I find it so interesting that in every book of the New Testament, almost, from uh, Romans on, it starts out with grace and peace be multiplied to you. In the first several chapters, look it up. Get your pen. Grace and peace be multiplied. 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, every chapter, grace and peace. Grace and peace be multiplied to you. If you're here tonight and you need peace, you can come up here and you can just take it. You say, yes, God, I'll take that up. You can fill up my heart and let that grace wash over me. His grace is in abundance. Amen. He wants to fill you up. When he brings a recovery of sight to the blind, it's like he is your recovery team. You know what's happening right now? There is a, there are two Marines who were so disturbed by Haiti's earthquake in 2010 that no one was going to help them. The government was even saying, we can't get in. But these being Marines, they're like, challenge accepted. So they went in and they gathered together eight people they gathered some resources and now years later they are preparing to go into nebraska i met them several times they're called team rubicon now which means from uh yeah team rubicon means what there's no going back there's no turning back we're going in to conquer and to finish what we've set out to do and bring about recovery to these devastated areas they come into iowa and nebraska before and they were watching this storm. You can see on their website, Team Rubicon. They were tracking that storm as it was coming in. And before it even hit ground, they had already set out and commissioned a team of people. Now they've got over 45,000 volunteers and they're global. They're 72% of those 45,000 are military members. But there is one requirement if you want to go help Team Rubicon as a volunteer. There's one requirement for you to join that recovery team to go help a city recover all like we've seen the devastation here. The one requirement that they require is that you can raise your hand. And I believe the Spirit of God is just asking that of you tonight. Whether you need... To be helped in some area, you want the cleanup crew to come in. I was walking down Fry's grocery store th this week, and I 
for the first time in my life, got to actually say clean up on aisle two. I dropped my bucket of blueberries and they spilled out all over the floor and ran to the end of the aisle. A whole thing of blueberries. But they came in and said, that's all right, we've got it. The Spirit of God hears to say, that's all right, we've got it. So, as he's playing, I want you all to come up, to come and worship. Do you guys mind singing that song, uh, Crashing Over That Grace, Crashing Over song that you sang, Liv? And just let his grace crash over you wave after wave. And whatever you need tonight, you can lay it down right here. Whatever you want to get, maybe you want to sign up to go help somebody else. Jesus said right here, Jesus said in Mark 16, he said to them, go into all the world. So it wasn't just commissioning Adam or Noah and David understanding this great commission. Jesus now, this in uh, Mark 16, verse 15, was shortly after 70 other disciples from the 12, 70 more had come and said, Jesus, it's amazing. Even the demons are subject to us in your name. 70 more. And he said, yep. And he turned to them, to the other people. And he said, listen, go. I believe he's commissioning a bunch more of you here tonight to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes, are you a believer? That's what believers do. We believe, right? That's just what we do. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. But in verse 17, it starts with and. He didn't stop there. It's and. He's wanting more. There's overflow. And these signs will follow those who believe. Your believers here tonight, they'll take up serpents. If they drink anything deadly, it'll by no means hurt them. They'll lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. When you lay hands on the sick, expect them to recover. Amen. You can expect them to recover. Don't lay hands on somebody to be healed if you're not going to expect them to recover. Well, maybe it'll work. Let's just try it. No, God said, go out. That Jesus said, go out. You lay hands on the sick and they're going to recover. Amen. In my name, they'll cast out demons. They'll speak with new tongues. They'll take up serpents if they drink anything. It'll by no means hurt them. Nothing will by any means hurt you. Amen. So as you come up here tonight, if you just want to come up and just be in his presence, then come on. Just come on and just, just soak it in. Let him just pour over you. Just pour over your heart. Amen. But if you've got something that you want specifically from God, I want to pray with you. If there are prayers, people who want on the prayer team to come up, uh, they'll be up here to pray. Uh, hey, Jackie. Pastor Eric. Pastor Eric is the praying man. Amen. So we're going to pray whatever you want from God. He's not withholding anything from you. Whatever you want from him, you can just come and boldly receive it. You can just come boldly to that throne of grace. Well, Father, we ask you tonight to have your way here. We ask you, Father, to have your way. Lord, we give you our hearts. If there's anybody here, maybe you don't even know what we're talking about. Maybe this is your first time to ever hear these kinds of things. Then you can come and you can say, Jesus, I'm not quite sure about what they're talking about, but I think it might be a little bit right. Then come talk to pastor here about how to, how to set that thing right in your life. The Bible says it was written so that you can know that you have eternal life. Amen. It doesn't have to be a question. Do, am I going to be saved by the good works that I do? No, it's because of Jesus. Come talk to Pastor Eric. If you, are, if you want healing tonight, if you just want prayer of agreement for something, then come on up. Let's all stand up as we worship God. Hallelujah. Go ahead, Liv. in the water with a love that flows so deep 
Wash over me, wash over me. Sing it again, sing it again. There is healing in the water with a love that flows so deep. Wash over me, wash over me. Oh, forgiveness. Forgiveness in the water. With a love that flows so deep, wash over me, wash over me. Oh, salvation, salvation in the water. With a love that flows so deep, wash over me, wash over me. Sing it again, there's healing. There's healing in the water With a love that flows so deep Wash over me, wash over me There's forgiveness Forgiveness in the water With a love that flows so deep Wash over me, wash over me
the love that flows so deep. Wash over me, wash over me. Come on, there's healing. Salvation, salvation, come on. Salvation in the water with the love that flows so deep. Wash over me, wash over me. Oh, sing, there's healing in the water. There's healing in the water with the love that flows so deep. Wash over me, wash over me. Oh, yes, forgiveness. Forgiveness in the water. With the love that flows so deep. Wash over me, wash over me. Oh, yes, salvation. Salvation in the water. With the love that flows so deep, wash over me, wash over me. Come on, keep singing it again. There's healing in the water. There's healing in the water. With the love that flows so deep, wash over me, wash over me. Oh, yes, there's forgiveness. Forgiveness in the water With the love that flows so deep Wash over me, wash over me Oh, salvation in the water Salvation in the water With the love that flows so deep Wash over me, wash over me. Oh, let's sing it again. There's healing. There's healing in the water. With a love that flows so deep. Wash over me, wash over me. Yes, love. Forgiveness in the water With the love that flows so deep Wash over me, wash over me 
the audience and you just want somebody around you to pray, then would you just raise your hand and then people just around you can just pray with you. Whatever you want prayer for, let's do that. So if you just, whatever you want prayer for, it's there's, there's power when we come together and we can stand together as brothers and sisters in Christ. Amen. So if you just want prayer for whatever you want, just raise your hand right now and just have somebody to pray around you. Anybody? Is anybody here who, who maybe you want healing for something specific? You want to come up? I'm happy to pray with you. Pastor will pray with you. Anybody else? Amen. Pastor. So we'll, we'll just kind of have um, this be an opportunity. If, uh, if you want to stay in worship, the worship team, you can play anything you'd like. You should close us with something, uh, something maybe upbeat a little bit. Um, if you're here, we're going to finish by just giving God praise, and we're going to end on a high note. We're going to praise God. And so if you're here uh, for the next couple moments, we're going to praise God. But you also have an opportunity um, as people are leaving. Uh, we don't have a hard dismissal. We kind of stay until the room empties. So if you're here and maybe there's a lot of people and you're like, oh, I don't know if I want to do it with all these people in here. Um, as people leave, just know we're here to linger for a little bit. We're here to um, allow God's space to do something in our heart. So um, we're going to give God some praise here to end. But if you need something, just know that we're going to stay here for a little bit longer and you can still uh, worship with us. Let me just pray as those will dismiss in a moment. Jesus, you are good. You are good. You are good. You are good. God, I just, um, I thank you. God, that you have restored sight to my blind eyes. God, I'm thankful. When I was at my worst, you were at your best. God, I'm thankful, God, that you always, always, always pursued me, God. No matter how fast I ran from you, God, you ran faster. And I pray over the people in this room tonight that came here uh, hurting, broken, empty, doubting, struggling. God, I pray that um, if they haven't yet got what they came here for, that they would press in just a few minutes longer. They wouldn't leave, God, until they've got what they came here for and what you prepared in advance for them. God, we pray that we would push. We would pray until something happens. We would push, God. We wouldn't stop until we've met with you, until we've been in your presence, God. So maybe there's someone here. They need to push for a moment. They need to continue to pray. They need to continue to pursue. But for everyone else here, as we end tonight with worship, I pray that uh, they would leave here. We hope to see them Sunday or whatever church they go to. God, would they be a blessing to where they go? Would they go and do what they've heard today? Live in overflow. We thank you, Jesus. Amen. Let's worship. You have done it all for me. Jesus, you have done it.